Thank you so much for staying tuned. If you just joined us, this is TMI Sunday's edition, the very first edition for the week. And in this segment, I'm taking a look at Edo 2024. The role of the social media in electioneering. That's what I'm saying. Okay, get to hear your candidate is popular in the social media. In fact, he's a governor in the social media. He's a president in the social media. It cannot reflect in real life. You that is in social media talking and talking and advising, do you have your PVC? You get to see so much banter on the social media. But some are saying you just cannot jettison social media or its use or its importance in the forthcoming election. What do you feel about that? Social media in a do 2024. I still have my guest with me in the studio, a barrister Imano Obakpola, and of course, barrister Douglas Obankwa. They are speaking truth of power this morning. But please, barrister, watch that language. <laughs> watch that language. I, Go, I, yes, I, I apologize. Yes. Yes, I apologize so again to our viewers. So please. All right. What are you likely to note? A do 2024. September is closer to us than we think. The parties, they are out with their candidates. They are running mates. Before you know it again, campaign will be in there. They're going to start talking about manifesto. But there's one aspect many people are really participating in, this social media. And they are saying it might just be a game changer in the forthcoming election. Barrister Obankwa, what do you feel about this trend? Uh, well, the development of the social media is a welcome development. And... Um, um, the reason I find it very fascinating is because it's a youth-based medium and gives the youth an opportunity to be able to get um, views or news on what is happening in the society. However, we have to be very careful how we encourage uh, people to abuse it because anything that is not well um, used will be abused. That's why you have abuse for use. Um, so um, there's a current trend going on of people writing or posting unsubstantiated content on the social media, particularly with the intention to malign or defame people. We um, have to find a way um, to ensure that we have some deterrence. Um, um, the, the, the right to freedom of speech is provided for by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended. So the right is actually a natural right, the Constitution being a ground norm. However, the same Constitution and other subsidiary legislations have said that that right is not an absolute right. So because from where your right stops is where another one begins. Are you with me, sir? Mm -hmm. And um, so, um, um, Reverend Father Matthew Hassan Kuka said, the freedom to speech, freedom of speech, rather, is not a license, or it's not, it's not freedom to talk nonsense. Freedom of speech is not a license to talk, talk nonsense. nonsense. That's what he said. You know, even though Idi Amin was a um, dictator in the 70s, there's something he said that I find very relevant today. He said, I guarantee you freedom of speech. But what I cannot guarantee you is freedom no, after speech. speech. Now, that was a dictator talking, but come to look at it today, you find that people just say whatever they want to say. Oh, Mr. Marshall is a bastard. Mm. Is that that you don't know the meaning of bastard? That's a hypothetical situation. Yeah, of course I know, I know. Yeah, of course I know, I know. <laughs> you don't know the meaning of bastard, mm. or you don't know who we say Marshall is. Mm. Now, the point I want Nigerians to know, and they should listen very carefully, that do not say what you cannot substantiate. Mm. Do not put on the social media what you cannot prove. Because there might be a day of reckoning. Some people actually just, I beg, I know fit. They will leave it. But there are some people who have reputation to protect. When they arrest you for cyber st uh, stalking and cyber bullying, now uh, you will say they are trying to oppress you. Are you with me, sir? You can't just come to social media and you use the whole of a program. Imagine two of us, three of us, using the whole of a program to talk about one person or two people. If what you are saying is correct, there's no problem. But if you are not saying things that are so very grave, where the allegations, you must have your proof. Because there are two things that may happen. The person might go to the civil court 
to sue for defamation of character. And mind you, damages for this defamation of character, they are usually very huge. Because reputation is everything. The courts have said in a plethora of cases that the reason they give such heavy damages is because you have to be able, you cannot value, you cannot uh, um, calculate the value of a person. So that's why sometimes the court gives as much as 500 million, 100 million, 50 million. Sometimes I've seen 1 billion as damages. So those of you that run online television stations, I know those uh, people that run online television stations, those of you that say you are bloggers, you are influencers, you may influence your way to prison. You know, because as a matter of fact, the same law that gives you freedom of speech also provides for situations where whatever you say or do can be interrogated, can be put under scrutiny, interjected. And if it is found that you have done something wrong, two things are likely going to happen to you. Three things. You may be forced to apologize in a national daily, national television station. You may be forced to pay a huge sum of money, and thirdly, you may go to prison. Or the three may even happen to you at the same time. So we should, in fact, you might even pay fine. If you, 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 can, you can pay fine and still go to prison. Many people don't know that. So we should, that's four things now. So we should be very careful how we engage in the social media. Right. Because the internet never forgets. Forgets. Okay, I'll come back to you, Barrister Bakwa. Barrister Manuel, you heard him. I've, I've been opportunity to be in some groups, and what I see <coughs> in these groups, they are not, not what's seen. You get to say beverage of insults, unsubstantiated claims, all in the name of campaigning all in the name of trying to pull one down for your candidate to go up in this social media space. What do you have to say about that? Well, in, in every millennium, there is another um, instrument, something that is new in every millennium. And uh, in this millennium, uh, the social media has come to stay as one of the springboard to achieving both negative and positive. The social media as it stands just now is a floodgate for all manner of display, unfortunately. But be it as it may, I think those who have their heads on their neck would prefer to see the social media as a platform for to give information that will, be, that will be of benefit to every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Mm. And uh, you cannot separate just now the social media from our lifestyle. I, I tell my child, I say, look, my, this, the social media, this is a generation of social media. I tell them, mm. this is a generation of social media. Yeah. And you don't use it negatively. Instead, you use it positively. positively. But unfortunately, we have come to find ourselves in a situation where uh, instead of love, we will not see hate. No wonder the past administration came up with what they called a hate speech or hate species, as the case may be. And the today politics, uh, particularly with the last election, presidential election from 2014, we saw how important the social media is, wherein some of the obedience took advantage of the social media. Even when we were made to, when, even when we were made to understand that a political presidential candidate and his party do, does not have structure, and uh, the obedience argued on the social media that, look, what type of structure? Do we want building? Do we want bridges? Do we want what? That they think that the social media is the people. And that any person that is saying X, Y, Z does not have structure, that that person may not be correct with what he or she is saying or said as at that time. 
and we found that and we saw how important the social media was in that election. And I think that the social media is still very much important in any other election that will take place in Nigeria. And particularly just now, we are considering the forthcoming Edo elections, governorship elections. And I think the social media has a very vital role to play because if you, if you think or you run down the importance of the social media, any of the political party and their candidates that run down the importance of the political party, uh, of the social media rather, may be doing themselves more harm than good. Because we've already, we are already seeing candidates of some political parties already manifesting, taking advantage of the dividends or good or positivity of the social media already. And I think whether anybody believes it or not or agrees with it or not, they are already making impact because the, the, the youths of today believe so much on social media. So if given the chance, the whole 24 hours of a day, they will be on social media doing one thing or the other. We've even seen even trade, commerce just now, mm -hmm. is being done on social media. I think that is the advantage of uh, information that uh, we need to begin to, to, to do and to take advantage of all of these things. But unfortunately, we also see that in the social media, there, there, there are more negativity than even the positivity because uh, freedom of speech as uh, freedom of information as is now making some of us or some of the users of the social media to begin to abuse the, 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 the platform. And that is why, uh, and unfortunately, you cannot separate the abuse of social media from even the uh, benefits of it. Because uh, it is not all head that is straight when it comes to thinking. Because some persons, the way they reason is different from how uh, they ought to. Because they see social media, oh, as long as I have access to an Android phone, I cannot do whatever I like on social media. But I think with time, even the inventors of all of these social media will begin to put restrictions. And I think that will better the usage of the platform. Now, some of the people that the popularity in the social media does not reflect your popularity in the real world. What does it say about that? That is the truth of the matter. Hmm. Because many of the people there are social media INEC. Social media INEC? Yes. Hmm. Um, there is no polling unity on Twitter or Facebook or WhatsApp. And um, any person that knows what he's doing, Social media is very important, I would say, but it doesn't, in any case, determine that you are more popular. The old woman, the Bojo, would have not seen light for three days to even charge her phone. If she should have been looking at Facebook or WhatsApp. Social media is for the youth. But you also ask yourself the question, how many of those youth have PVCs? You know, you ask the question in your opening. It was a very brilliant question you asked. Even if they have PVCs, how many of them will go out on that day to vote? Just imagine that the rain falls on that day. <laughs> Some of them will look for a woman to warm their body on that day. <laughs> Why election is going, going on? on. You know. So the truth is, how politically conscious are you? Because I feel like your political consciousness will determine what you will see on the social media. You can't just come and say, yeah, but the back a lot to 200 million naira from so, so, so local government. Before you can say such a thing on Facebook or WhatsApp or Twitter, that's X now, or Instagram, you should have how he signs the money. You know what I mean? Yes. A concrete yes, evidence. Yes, evidence. You can't just say whatever you like and think you get away with it. Then the person wants to redeem his name, you say the person is oppressing you. No. That's what I want people to know. There's an issue of a guy that was arrested recently for saying some kind of things on some, about some powerful people in Nigeria. And Nigerians were just crying. I was looking at them. Did he have proof of what he said? He didn't have proof. So it has to be there. They will just go to court and get the remand on that. Keep you there. Find the investigation. So 
We people have to be very careful. I just want to I enjoy a do state youth. A do youth. Your name is not on the ballot. Don't take unnecessary enmity because of anybody. Because all these people contest the election, they are all friends, let me tell you. They know where they meet. They are they have there's a class um, there's, 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 there's a class consciousness among them. They, some of them have, I don't want to say, they, but I want you to know that they are on the same class, the same level. Um, so, I, during elections, I don't want to say some things I have seen. You'll be very shocked. You have to be very careful. I'm not saying don't campaign for your candidates, but be very careful not to go and cross the line. The line. Because sometimes the people you are crossing the line for will even leave you to your feet. It's not easy to hire a lawyer now to go to federal court mm -hmm. to defend the case of cyber bullying. On the day they will arrange you in court, no matter how superstar your lawyer is, you're not likely going to go home the same day. They'll start protecting your big conditions. If they sue you for defamation of character at the high court, they will serve you. Go and get a lawyer. In this they of move off subsidy because even lawyers themselves, they, they calculate their, <laughs> their the expenses. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? They, will, they will do it before they, will, they calculate it in dollars because they also travel. Mm -hmm. They need hard currency to travel. So they would, when they give you bill, you have, you have to, you, 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 like, you are likely going to go and settle with the person, mm -hmm. to beg the person because of, you know, and you, you have a protracted situation, you go to court from day to day. So, I like the fact that the social media is vibrant. And you don't have to even participate in the, but you, there are many things you can do with the social media, aside just being a, I don't know, okay, let me call the word an influencer, let me be very generous with my words. Mm -hmm. Being an influencer for, um, for uh, a candidate. And even if you're an influencer for a candidate, you can't just be doing 24-7, you have no other work. Occupation, influencer, where does that happen? If you have a major job that you do or business, then your influencer business should be something that, that comes... The side hustle. Side hustle. Except you're a content creator. Fine, that could be like all you do. And, and I noticed that content creation in this part of Nigeria is not vibrant. Mm -hmm. People don't do it much. There are very few people that are good in what they're doing. And we have very brilliant people here. So we should look at developing... And that's where government should come in. All right. Developing competencies for content creation... You know, cultural um, um, adumbration, do you understand? Okay. And also, even if people are going to be doing um, whatever they're doing, like you can have trainings okay. for the youth so that okay. they will know from these things we are saying. I'll come back to Barrister. And I talk about campaigns on the social media. Does it have an impact? Well, campaigns, as in you get to see the APC, the PDP, the YPP, the PRP, the NNPP, you just name it. Yes, um, it's a yes and a no. Yes and no. How? Firstly, yes, we saw the manifestation of a social media campaign in the last elections, but particularly the presidential election. Maybe because the youth uh, fell in love with a particular candidate, not the party, a particular candidate. Yes. And uh, they saw that candidate as, a, as a, an avenue, uh, perhaps, that the youth could use to also cling onto power in the nearest future. And uh, we saw the importance of our social media. Uh, a, a, that candidate was, not, uh, was a candidate where that was never given any chance. But we saw the importance of social media in that aspect. On the, on the negative, on the no side of it is that, uh, just like my learned friend said, uh, some persons have uh, made themselves a uh, social media INEC. And uh, there are no voting. Uh, ballot boxes on social media because just now Nigeria is not uh, uh, taking part in uh, electronic voting. Maybe until we get to that uh, uh, situation or platform where we will now uh, be doing electronic voting, maybe that is where you begin to see some of uh, the importance of uh, social media with respect to voting in an election. But just now, uh, it is not. And uh, some persons may even go there and uh, create more problem for a particular candidate and his political party. Because by the time you make the social media platform an attack avenue, 
where you begin to attack everything that comes on, except you feel that it is your own view that should uh, supersede every other view uh, or views, as the case may be. So, but if you look at it, uh, we, we have also come to, to find ourselves in a world uh, and uh, in a situation where you cannot rule out the importance of social media outrightly. Because really, even uh, the youth are always engaged on social media, as we have come to see it. So, what every political party just now, particularly in the forthcoming Edo State elections, we see them on social media too. They try to give their, their manifesto, uh, try to tell the people uh, what they think they, uh, they want. But we find ourselves just now, even in most parts of Edo State, there is no light. So by the time your Android phone is down, no, we will recharge. Oh, All right, you just hold on. We will come back. We will still go back to the yeah. traditional way of electioneering. Oh, right. I think that is the ultimate. Barrister, what's your take about someone spending millions of naira just to get that awareness in the social media? Is it really worth it, Barrister Bankwa? You're going to see a party, whether APC, PDP, YPP, NNPP, uh, LP, ZLP, you just name it. The president seems to be more than the social media. You're going to see their followers and cronies making so much noise, both positively and, of course, negatively, Barista Bankwa. And, well, you know, engagement um, in the social media, it's actually um, cost in, um, capital intensive. It's not cost effective at all. Um, all over the world, the media takes a lot of a, la a large chunk of campaign funds. That's why you see that um, people don't easily enter into the fray in an American presidential election because the media trying to get the media is very expensive. The people who are going to talk for you, they ordinarily would not just talk for you for free. That's the truth. And they have uh, an arrangement where they have to get people to be like influencers that will influence. You have bloggers, you know, who blog for them. You have people who write for them. They, sometimes they will have their paid uh, analysts coming to the, on air to talk yeah. for them, you know. So um, it's important that they are able, because the social media is targeted at the youth population or the enlightened uh, what do you call it, um, um, enlightened senior citizens. Mm. So when it comes to the use of the social media, there's already an enlightened class interest where they have to, you know, look at the, the way and manner that the social media is used. Uh, but my, my only concern is that social media should be used as a means of development and driving positive narratives. I've told people you can actually do political campaigns without monslinging or maligning people. Um, because the truth of the matter is that it doesn't matter how you monsling or malign a person. If a person believes in a person, if another believes in a person, he believes in him. That's the truth. And so the more you, you, more you will malign and monsling him, the more you make him more popular. And people will now ask the question, uh, if they are actually talking about this person because of this, there must be something special about this person. You know, that's why you, uh, you know, that's what you see, that's what happened during the Buhari Jonathan campaigns. So much money was spent to malign, muscling, and debase um, uh, Buhari. And so what, it worked in reverse for him because he now became very extremely popular. And people wanted to know why they were popular. So if you keep talking about somebody, either for good or for bad, and you're always talking about the person, talking about but you give the person a larger than life image, and the person that assumes a kind of status that even you that is driving it can never get to. Mm -hmm. So you might just be giving the person free publicity <laughs> in a way that the person that becomes an icon or an enigma. Um, you know, because you think you, are, you want to drive the person, you want to run him down, but God is using you to run him up. So, <laughs> when you are using the social media, they, say they, they said um, there's, uh, the power is nothing without control. Aristotle said justice is like the metaphor of the knife. 
like the knife, if you use it recklessly, it will, you will cut yourself. You get caught. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's why you, know, you have to be very careful. careful. So that, I used to use the analogy of using a knife to cut and the care that you take in using a knife as a real life situation that whatever you do in life, you should not do it excessively. Right. You know, so the use of social media, spending money on social media, because come to think of it, if politicians are spending money on social media, they're empowering the youth. That's the truth of the matter. Mm -hmm. So you all you're actually doing that some youth are getting regular income during the electionary campaigns and that will take their minds off crime and criminality. All right. Some are saying that if you have enough presence in social media, that can guarantee victory in the election. What's your say about that? Uh, I, 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 it's I, I, a one-way ticket. They know in the social media space, man, you are there already. Uh, well, that is a, is a mere assertion. And uh, uh, we saw, I always make reference to the last uh, uh, presidential elections. Yes, we saw how a particular candidate took over the social media. Right. But uh, the election itself turned turn out to be dramatic. So being guaranteed the usage of social media, perhaps because some of the youths uh, have a very strong zest on a particular uh, candidate and his political party or otherwise does not guarantee the, the reality of the vote when they begin to count. Because we see that, in, in um, particular in this part of uh, the world, we find ourselves is that most persons are only on social media, but they are not able, they've not even registered as voters for the elections. So when you are there on social media carrying out campaign for a particular candidate and his party, or carrying a campaign for a particular political party, doing the damage to some others. Uh, you, that is not uh, the, the likelihood of uh, the results you may get when it comes to the re-elections. So yes, social media has a role to play, no doubt about that. But what we are also uh, advocating is that those who, have not, who are up to 18 years old should ensure that they get themselves registered and not just registered they should also take part in the elections because that is a primary a civic right for every citizen who is up to the voting age so not just sit on social media and begin to do a lot of manipulations and uh, at the close of the day you will now conclude with what you have done or what we see on social media i think social media good but we should also encourage one another to see that any person who is of the uh, voting age get himself registered, just like I said, then take part in the elections. And after that, we we'll see the, those who have succeeded, particularly the candidates and his party that won the election, should not give Nigerians the dividends of democracy. Just as we have been anticipating since 1999 for the dividends of democracy. And not, or not until that is done we may not uh, guarantee the importance of either the social media or the voting uh, section uh, in this uh, democratic setting just now. Mm -hmm. So social media has come to stay, and it has played a very important role, but it's not a guarantee that one will win the election. All right. Now, does it give credence to uh, you know, the performance in the general election? Talking about the social media, Barista Bankwa. Yeah, the social media could actually, actually be very problematic if it is not well managed by, you know, the different political parties. For example, you are given the impression that your candidate is winning or has won the election. You know, that is capable of creating strife, complete com um, pandemonium. Um, I, you know, the government has done many laws and regulations. Nigeria has one of the greatest body of laws you can find anywhere in the world. However, the problem is implementation of those laws. You understand what I mean? So we will be able to um, look at how do we ensure that, because someone somewhere could just have the possibility of causing complete chaos by his or her indiscretion in bringing some kind of mal uh, false information to the public. 
Um, you know, INEC says, according to the Electoral Act, that you should not publish results. results. Right? But I don't think you're snapping the INEC results that INEC itself has published. Or you go into the IREV and taking a result that is authentic. That would not be publication because what you're just doing that you're just showcasing, not published. It's already published. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, but I think where it's wrong is for you to go, uh, uh, Oredo World 1, Unit 3, you by yourself and I put the number, you type it, uh, APC, this, PDP, this, Labor, this, that for, that is publication, that is a crime. And it's I, a crime on its own. Yeah, it's a crime, yes. Hmm. When you publish your own result as if you are assistant INEC or you are co-INEC. Hmm. But if you snapped INEC published results, you're not publishing, you're showcasing what has been published. Hmm. Because INEC put it on the notice board, you snapped it. Yes. That's not publication. Uh, because that is also very important for us, for us to have some level of uh, uh, check on the integrity of the process. Um, but even though that, even in the case of uh, um, Peter Obi and the um, Bola Ahmed Tunibu, the Supreme Court have said that the only collation process that they know is the one recognized by the Electoral Act which is the physical coalition centers. That the IRF is not a coalition center, it's just a storing, it's a place where they store results. But that it, when it comes to coalition of results, there must be physical coalition of uh, returning officers and the INEC, um, um, what's it called, officials being present. There is computation by hand. And uh, you have the agents of the political parties present they observe, you have a leisure observe, the, the agents make some observations, complaints, petitions, and after which only the returning officer is allowed by law to declare the results. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a problem in Adamawa State where the... Uh, uh, where the REC... Uh, yes, REC... Announced the results. Announced the results. <laughs> the returning officer... <coughs> and interestingly, that, position, that situation was, was aided my top security agents and everybody is pursuing the old lady wreck. What happens to the other people that were part of the process? Mm -hmm. And you know, nothing happened to them, you know, but you know, for the wreck to have the confidence to do it, is it the confidence is the support given to them by either the Commissioner of Police that the election duty commissioner of police or the election duty DSS, election duty NSCDC, mm -hmm. election duty army commander, they will say go ahead, we are behind you. Now when the thing came to a to his shade, they left him to his fate. You know, and you know that that uh, wreck is currently being prosecuted at the Federal High Court. You know, and uh, I will hear that there's no issues of uh, disciplinary because a lawyer, disciplinary uh, measures being taken against him at the Legal Partisanal Disciplinary Committee, LPDC. Mm -hmm. You know, so we have to look at the process in a way that, even as we are going to ensure that we have a sanctity of the process, we do not have a scenario where we have a, a hijacking of the process mm -hmm. by some social media INEC announcing their own results and making their own opinions after the announcement of the results. They can make opinions, you know, but I uh, know that they will not come and be saying, uh, because if you have any, um, this thing with the results, there is a legal framework for what you do. Many, many Nigerians don't know that INEC result that is declared as returned if you, there is a procedure for appeal before you even go to tribunal. Mm -hmm. Once that happens and the INEC finds merit in it, they will reconstitute the coalition process and consider your appeal and see if it has merit or not. All right. Before we go, Barrister Emmanuel uh, Obakpano, now what advice do you have for some politicians that rely mostly on social media? It is dangerous to rely mostly on social media because... Um, what we have seen in past elections goes to tell us that social media is not the final decider of what transpired during an election. Uh, most persons relied on information gotten on social media. Even the social media at a point became uh, the court and you begin to see all manner of uh, posts and display all eyes on judiciary and all <laughs> things like that. I was privileged to be at the Court of Appeal in Asaba, mm. where one of the justices now, when I, I was addressing the court, 
that told me, hey, Obakpolo, I hope all eyes is not on the judiciary. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we, there was a, a, a kind of a comic relief mm -hmm. for all lawyers. And uh, we don't want that kind of situation where you begin to put people on their toes because of the usage of the social media. And also, I think uh, both INEC and uh, the National Orientation Agency have a lot of uh, work to also do. Mm -hmm. the national, particularly the National Orientation Agency ought to start uh, giving Nigerians information, the tutor, the Nigerian youths, on the usage of uh, uh, the social media uh, with regards to elections, and also to let every one of us know that uh, elections is not a do or die affair. Okay. So don't take uh, the social media as an advantage to begin to malign or defame people. Rather, the social media should be seen as a platform to uh, uh, do good influence or influence, uh, influences right. on people. And not until we begin to uh, give ourselves that proper orientation, we may not know the importance of the social media. All right, thank you, thank you so so much, gentlemen. Let's last line about quite 30 seconds. Advice to uh, persons that rely more on social media for anything they want to do, but in the election. If they seconds. rely too much on social media, mm -hmm. they will have social media results and uh, <laughs> social media veggies <laughs> of tribunal. Like those people that said, oh, eyes of the judiciary, they went yes. to, the, to court and they were sleeping. And they were sleeping. <laughs> All right, you've heard that. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, <laughs> gentlemen. All eyes of the judiciary, they were sleeping in court. Like, did they blame you for the AC or stuff? Like that? I remember, I remember the life. I was like, what in the world is going on? Anyway, you've heard them. If you them on social media, definitely going to get social media results. Yeah. And please be careful on how you throw words or throw ink or throw shades on the social media. Those that really want to take you serious, if they pick you up on those words, my brother, you pay through your nose. You definitely play or pay through your nose. Gentlemen, thank you once more. I pray a wonderful analysis, round one, round two, and all that. Thank you so, so much. I know it's uh, serious. You know, <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. So we'll do it again next week, Sunday. God willing. Bye for now.